Hi guys, it's Mr. Brom here and for this next series of music sessions we're going to learn to play a pop song which I think is going to be really good fun and we're going to use some instruments and we're going to do some singing. Don't worry if you haven't got access to an instrument I'm going to show you how you can play this song just using the internet. But before we start I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the circle of learning in music. Now you don't need to write what I write. You can just watch and listen. The circle of learning in music starts with this. It starts with you having a listen to a piece of music. Now why do we listen to music? We listen to music because it makes us feel good. We listen to music because you can have a dance to it, you can sing along and music is great like that. But when you're learning music, you listen to it for a slightly different reason. You listen to it for all those reasons too, but also you listen because you want to learn about that music and you want to be able to play it and it will help you to become better at music by listening with a bit more attention to detail. After you've listened to some music, you need to be able to read a bit of music. Now, why do we need to be able to read music? We need to be able to read music because if we want to play the music that we've just listened to, it's going to be useful for us to look at it written down and go, ah, I see how it goes. Then it's going to help you to be able to play it. Once you've had a look at the music written down, you can play it on an instrument or use your voice to sing it. And that is a really good fun part. Just as much fun, I think, is when you've played and sang the song, you can make up your own version of it and make your own music. The posh word for that is to compose. You can compose your own music. When you've made up your own music, the next thing that you're going to do is write it down. So it's important that we learn a bit about how to write music down. Once you've written your music down, you've completed the circle of learning in music and you go back to listening. But this time you can listen to music that you or your friends have made up and you can listen to music that you have played and sang and recorded or that other people are playing and singing. So that's the circle of learning. And we're going to start off at the very top here with listen. And this is the music that we're going to listen to. We're going to listen to Sunday Best by Surfaces. So let's go ahead and click play. That sounded great, didn't it? So I'm going to tell you what I think about when I listen to that music. And I'm going to use the musical dimension words, the P, S, D, D, T, T, T. And I'll fill in these words as we go through. So. So what I notice first of all is that there's a, an effect that's been used on that section and it means that the timbre changes from a very dull sound to a much brighter sound. The timbre is the way that music sounds. Normally you talk about the timbre or the tone of a single instrument but in this instance we've got a change in the timbre of all the instruments that are playing. Let's listen to that change in timbre again. Here's the dull sound. It's becoming brighter. Hey, 
feeling good. And then when it starts there, you've got the full brightness. So that's a change in the timbre. The next thing that I heard was the drum fill. Let's listen to that drum fill again. And a really cool drum fill. Now, this D is for duration. And duration is a function of rhythm. To play diddle dicka dun dun would be a bit tricky, but we could play that rhythm like this. We could do a digger digger coffee, digger digger coffee. And I'm going to do another lesson on this particular type of rhythm, semiquavers, at a later stage, so watch out for that. Let's listen on to the song. Okay, the next thing that I'm noticing is the relaxed tempo of this song. It's not a song that goes at a really fast tempo. And I thought you might like to have a look at this, guys. This is a metronome. A metronome is a way of measuring the speed of music. And this is what they used to look like. They're clockwork, look. So you wind it up there. And then... If I move this along that piece of metal, it'll make a different tempo of music. Check this out. If you move it lower down, it becomes a faster tempo. Check this. And if you move it higher up, it's a slower tempo. Now you have got a metronome because if you've got access to the internet you're going to be able to type in online metronome and it will show you this screen. On this screen you can type in a BPM, hit play and there you have your metronome. Now, this song, I think, is going at about 113 BPM. What does BPM stand for? It stands for beats per minute. So this means that there are 113 beats in every minute. And I think that's the speed that this track is going at. Can be a better day Let's try it. The challenge. All you gotta do is leave it better than you found it. It's gonna get difficult to stand but hold your balance. I just say whatever cause there is no way you'll found it. And everyone falls down sometimes. But you just... So the tempo there was about one one three B P M. Let's listen on. So the next thing I'm noticing there is the change in texture between the choruses and the verses. Let's have a listen to the chorus. I can hear drums, bass, guitar, piano, singing. And now we're in the verse, the drums drop out, the guitar drops out, the bass drops out, and all that we're left with is the piano and the singing. All you gotta do is leave it better than you found it. It's gonna get difficult to stand but hold your balance. I just say whatever cause there is no way you're found it. Now we're into the bridge, some more instruments have been added and there is a change to a thicker texture. Okay. 
into the chorus now. We heard that drum fill again, and you're going to hear a thick texture. So we can say that there is a difference in the texture between the chorus and the verses. The verses have a thinner texture, the chorus is a thicker texture. Okay, let's listen on. Okay, the next thing that I'm noticing is the dynamics. The dynamics are loud and quiet in music. You're going to notice that the vocals are quite loud in the verse section and the piano is quieter. So that's an example of the way dynamics are used in this music. In the verse, the piano has quiet dynamics and the vocal, the voice, has got louder dynamics. Okay, let's carry on. Just say whatever cause there is no way you're grounded. Everyone falls down sometimes. We're in the bridge again. But you just gotta know it'll all be fine. It's okay. Uh -huh, uh -huh. It's okay. It's okay. It's feeling good. And we're back into the chorus. And that brings us to the next musical dimension which is structure we can say that the structure of this piece of music is going from a verse to a bridge and then into a chorus which is pretty normal for a pop song now you've got your musical dimensions there the one that we haven't dealt with yet is pitch. Now there's really a lot there and I don't want you to worry if you don't understand it all because we've been looking at all of the musical dimensions as we listened. When we get down to here and we play and we sing we're also going to think about the dimensions there. When we make up our own music we're going to be using the dimensions. So we use the dimensions all the way around the cycle and it gives you enough time to start to understand them. Okay, we're going to have a look at pitch when we go on to the next step and we start to read some music. If you're in year six, I want you to write some sentences about Sunday Best using the musical dimension words. You could write that the timbre of the introduction moves from duller to brighter. You could write that the texture of the verses is thinner than the texture of the choruses. You could write that the tempo is 113 beats per minute. You could write that a pattern of shorter durations followed by longer ones make up the rhythm of the drum fill that takes you into the chorus. You could write that the dynamics of the piano in the verses are quieter than the dynamics of the vocals. You could write that the structure of the piece goes verse, bridge, chorus, and then cycles through that again. And we're going to deal with pitch in the next little section. <laughs> 